And here we go. Hello, everybody. My name is Evan Adler, and I am a physical therapist at UNC Health, part of UNC uh, Therapy Services here. And welcome to Therapy Thursday. Um, today, um, uh, we're very, very pleased to bring you a, uh, a new program um, as part of our Therapy Thursday series. Um, this is part of our um, community engagement uh, committee's effort to, um, to help reach out in these times where we still aren't really um, being all hands-on with patients um, outside of the clinic as much as, as we have been in the past because of COVID. Um, so uh, just over a year ago, we instituted Therapy Thursday, which is our, our virtual series uh, informational series, kind of giving back to the community. And it's great because we can uh, reach not just to our local community, uh, but much broader away. I know I've, ha I've had interest from folks uh, all across the country um, that might be jumping in here today. So I think that's fantastic. Again, my name is Evan Adler. I'm a physical therapist based at the Northwest Cary Wellness Center uh, here in North Carolina. Um, I am uh, the uh, creator, curator, and your host for today, and sometimes presenter. Um, but uh, today we have a very special program uh, called Yoga for the Workplace. Um, this is one that I think is really speaking to a lot of people, and we have a lot of uh, folks jumping on here to, to attend, so it's fantastic. Um, please do keep an eye on the, on the chat as we go through. I'm going to be putting in some links in there for our Facebook uh, page where you can find out about upcoming events uh, for UNC Therapy Services, both in person and virtual. Uh, and also I'll put our, uh, our YouTube uh, channel there as well, where you can find all of our past episodes of Therapy Thursday. Lots of fantastic information there. Um, just sitting there waiting for you to discover. So, uh, last part is with any questions that you may have during the presentation, I do invite you to please use the chat feature and uh, I will be monitoring the chat along with Elise. And if it's something super urgent, we'll try to get to it right away. If not, um, we'll try to wait to the end and answer questions at that time. Okay, without further ado, um, I want to introduce to you our presenter for today, Elise Nichols. Take it away, Elise. Up, oh, and you got to take your um, your mute off. I am just trying to figure out if I am sharing appropriately. So let's see. Are you able to see my PowerPoint? I am not. Evan, I might have you, if you're able to come in here and just help me out really quickly. Let me grab. Hey, I tried to save it. All right, we are all set. Um, so, hopefully you can all see my presentation slides and we can get started. Sorry about that. I am an expert in physical therapy and yoga and not in technology or Zoom. So, as we get started, I just wanted to welcome you all to this talk on well-being at work through mindfulness and yoga. My name is Elise Nichols, as Evan introduced me, but I wanted to just give you a short presentation about myself before we dive in. Um, 
a short little introduction. So I am a physical therapist. I graduated from UNC's Doctor of Physical Therapy program in 2016, and I've been working with UNC ever since. I currently work at UNC Wellness Center in Northwest Cary. I am dry needling certified, and as a former dancer, I specialize in treating dancers. But I really enjoy working with a wide variety of patient populations from young uh, kids who have acute injuries to older adults working on balance training. I kind of like the whole spectrum. And I'm also a yoga instructor. I've been teaching for about 14 years now, and I teach at a few studios in Durham where I live, and I also help lead yoga teacher trainings. When I am not working in clinic or teaching, I enjoy gardening and spending time with my eight month old baby Elliot, my partner Blake, and my sweet puppy dog, as you see in this picture, who helps clean up after mealtime. So, yoga at work. Um, I thought of giving this talk because we have a lot of people coming into clinic with symptoms. Um, related to sitting for long periods of time at work. And it's not uncommon for us to see this directly correlated with increased work hours or increased stress at work. So I thought this presentation might be helpful just to give some very simple tools of using mindfulness and yoga practice to help address some of the potential stressors, not just physical, but also mental, that um, could be contributing to aches or pains from your work day. Uh, so in this presentation, I'll give a little bit of an introduction into mindfulness and yoga practice, kind of letting you know a bit about what that means. I'll talk some about the benefits of the mindfulness practice um, and some of the research that helps support it. And also give you ideas on ways that you can incorporate this into your daily routine so it doesn't feel like a burden or yet another thing to do. Um, I will go through some basic information. I went kind of down a rabbit hole of research because I like to nerd out on this stuff and then kind of realize that is not what most of you are probably coming to this talk for. So we'll do a short little bit of uh, information loading, and then I will talk you through a short yoga and mindfulness session so that you can experience for yourself. So we'll talk first about what is mindfulness exactly. It's a term that's thrown around a lot. You've probably heard it. Um, one of the most commonly cited definitions of mindfulness is an awareness that comes through paying attention in a particular way on purpose in a non judgmental manner. And it can be as simple as trying to connect to present moment by noticing, sitting and noticing your thoughts, your um, thought patterns, kind of what occupies your mental headspace and noticing your emotions, noticing physical sensations can be a really good way to anchor you in the present moment. Um, the hardest part about this, I think, is doing this in a non-judgmental manner. And what that means is trying to avoid this tendency that we all as humans have to ascribe um, labels to those sensations or those thoughts, good, bad, stressful, happy, sad, and really just trying to be kind of silent observer of your experience. And that does take practice and slow. Um, but the goal essentially is that we can slow down some of the mental chatter enough to be fully present. And when we're fully present, we can pay better attention to what is happening right now. We can be more effective and we can avoid this getting swept away or lost in thought or being overly reactive, potentially to stressful situations. So that is kind of just a really brief background of what mindfulness refers to. This next slide is just kind of give, giving some background of the benefits that have been found through research on what uh, mindfulness practice can do for you. So there are tons of research studies, numerous correlational studies, clinical intervention studies, laboratory studies, so all levels of evidence 
that have found meditation and mindfulness practice to be positively associated with psychological well-being and psychological health. The effects demonstrated include better self-awareness, um, being able to interrupt catastrophizing thoughts. So those are when sort of your wheels start spinning about one problem and then you start kind of loading all of it onto yourself. Um, it can help reduce negative bias and help reduce reactivity. So reactivity is kind of um, jumping to conclusions and potentially having conflict with others in your office. Specifically related to the workplace, there is research showing improved positivity affect. And what that in research literature refers to is um, how much, to what extent you as an employee, as a worker, feel energetic and enthusiastic, engaged in your work, attentive um, and active. So it's also linked um, with work-life enrichment, job satisfaction, and effective coping strategies, which I think we all can um, agree are really helpful in, in having some well-being within the workplace. Studies also show that mindfulness practice helps improve attention, ability to stay focused and be effective in your work. It increases creativity or your ability to be innovative and help problem solve and improve decision making. It's also linked with decreased aggression. So that might sound kind of extreme, but that can come out in a variety of ways and affect your um, relationship with coworkers, patients, clients, whoever it is that you work with. It is also linked with decreased emotional reactivity and decreased stress and anxiety. So I thought it is really cool that starting way back kind of um, with some neuro neurobiological evidence, it backs up sort of why these correlational studies are showing what they're showing. So there are numerous research studies showing that fMRIs, um, in people who practice regularly with mindfulness meditation have upregulation or increased activity in the frontal limbic uh, neural networks. And that is the part of the brain that is associated with executive function and emotional regulation, also attention control, planning, decision making. So all of those things that we see in the correlational studies as benefits of mindfulness. There's also um, shown to be decreased activity and kind of down regulation on the amygdala, which is that part of the brain that is involved in fight or flight responses, those sort of get me out of a stressful situation type um, responses that in general lead to us being able to be as productive, effective, or well in our workplace. Um, also really interesting is I found a few research studies that looked at dosage. So how long does it take somebody to practice mindfulness before we start to see these changes in brain activity? And there are studies showing that um, just eight weeks of practicing for less than 30 minutes a day um, can show produced uh, changes in the brain activity. Um, I will say anecdotally, just from talking with people, talking with patients, working with students in yoga practice, I think that the dosage even of 10 minutes a day can be really effective at helping to regulate stress. Um, so how do we do that? I have here on this slide, if you want to come back to it later, it will be again on the YouTube page, but just some tools to help with a mindfulness practice. So the first thing I do to help patients in clinic either get their exercises done or find time remembering to disconnect from work and practice mindfulness is to set a timer on your phone. So generally, it's really easy to get lost in your work, and um, it can be really helpful to set a timer on your phone, set a timer reminder on your calendar, and treat it like an appointment. Um, so this is your time to practice mindfulness. And again, it can be as short as a couple of minutes, um, up to 30 minutes. The most basic form of 
practicing meditation or mindfulness that I teach for beginners is just diaphragmatic breathing. And we'll go through that a little bit later on when we practice. Um, another mindfulness practice that I think is really helpful to help get out of sort of the, the very overactive mindset where um, we're just really stressed out um, and maybe have been kind of buzzy and running around with frenetic energy is this five, four, three, two, one practice. And I like to do this when I go on a walk, um, but it's basically moving through the five senses. So your sight, hearing, touch, smell, and taste, and practicing observation, mindfulness. So as I'm walking, I start out with trying to notice consciously and even kind of internally narrating to myself five things that I see. So looking at the shape of a leaf, looking at the clouds in the sky, looking at the color of the sidewalk, um, moving through five of those, and then four things that you feel or hear, sorry. And that can be like the sound of the birds, the wind rustling through the trees, three things that you feel, your feet stepping on the ground, the clothes sensation on your skin, the temperature of the air. Two and one are a little bit harder. Those are smelling and taste. So it can help if you are, you know, have something, some tea to drink, or you're walking through, you know, a lovely garden if we're also blessed with that. But even just practicing the first couple can help you drop back in and anchor yourself again in present moment, get a little bit out of your head. Next, I have on this list uh, or on this page a list of apps that I have used in the past or recommended to patients. The first is Insight Timer, and it's just what it sounds like. It's a timer that can take you through whatever time frame, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, five minutes, that you want to practice your mindfulness. And you can set it to play like intermittent bells, music, ambient noise, and you can choose kind of what works for you. Smiling Mind has more structured programs. It has programs, for example, for, I think, stress management. There is something for digital detox, which can help you disconnect from devices, um, a program for helping with sleep. So if you're looking for something in particular, that might be an app that you would like. UCLA Mindful is great for those of you who are really um, like things based on research. So these are evidence-based guided meditation practices. Um, and I think, you know, again, if you're really into evidence-based programs, this could be um, something that syncs up with you a little bit better. And then Headspace. Headspace is one that I think is pretty popular. It has guided meditations. And I think all of them, not sure, but I think all of them are led by uh, an Australian gentleman with a lovely voice to listen to. And there are instructions with animations and videos, and it's really great for beginners. And I believe that they also have structured programs too, if you want. Um, so I don't generally love the idea of connecting to apps and devices to help you with meditation, but if you're beginning, this can be a really good way to start you on um, a program or path, get you into a new habit. So let's shift gears. Again, we'll practice this all in a bit, but let's shift gears and talk a little bit about uh, yoga practice. So many of us sit behind a desk, and for the purposes of this presentation, that's sort of the type of work that I'm referencing. But sitting behind a desk, we're staring at computers far too much of the time in any given day. And this can be really taxing on your body. So the picture I have here is one that we, you know, some variation of this is often used to show good workplace ergonomics. And you may be familiar with this. I think lots of my patients know what you know, they're trying to do in terms of good versus bad sitting posture. They understand that sitting with um, slouched posture can increase tightness in the neck and the shoulders. Um, and that in an ideal world, we would all sit like this person on the right. However, even for myself and probably 99% of my patients, that's not the case most of the time. We get lost in our work and we find ourselves back in this sort of rounded forward shoulder, forward head posture. And that can really um, 
stressful to the body. So instead of trying to expect that you're going to have perfect posture all day long, I think that short daily yoga practices can be really helpful at counteracting some of the mechanical stresses on the body um, that, that we tend to assume. So let's go ahead. I have a couple of slides here that just go through some general movements that I think are useful for different parts of the body. And I wanted to include these so that if you do want to reference this presentation later, you can look back and see some examples um, of stretches and you could pick one or two that feel good to you and do them a couple of times throughout the day. Uh, but again, I'll lead you through just a short session in a moment, but I wanted to, to discuss these motions first. So on the left, just looking at somebody bending backwards and bending forward, really good to just bring some blood flow into the system, get some motion in the spine, loosen up stiffness. The middle picture is a stretch for your neck. And oftentimes this can be useful if you are someone that tends to find yourself shrugging and wearing your shoulders like earrings as you get stressed. The picture of the person sitting in the chair is just a spinal rotation movement. And this can be a good stretch, especially if you're tight in the upper back. Um, it's not necessarily bad to pop your back, but I am instructing this more as a sustained stretch uh, with breathing. This next slide shows um, stretches for the neck and the shoulder. And oftentimes I'm targeting to open up through the front of the body where we tend to round forward. So taking a break from your job, opening up through the front body and opening kind of into extension or leaning backwards in the upper body to counteract the rounded forward slouched position. So these are just some useful stretches. And then as we move on, this next slide is going to show some stretches for the hips. So targeting specifically the front of the hips that are tight from sitting in a chair and the lateral hip muscles that can be tight in a lot of people and just releasing those muscles can help, um, I think, to create some sense of relaxation in the body. So let's practice. Um, if you can go ahead and find a comfortable seat, or you can lie down, even if that's helpful, I'm going to talk you through some deep breathing exercises. So sitting up, try to find good posture and, and feel yourself lined up shoulders over the hips, crown of the head, reaching towards the ceiling. And if it is comfortable for you, you can close your eyes. And I just want you to start to notice what your natural breathing is. So without trying to make any changes or come into any specific type of breathing, just notice what your breathing pattern is like here at rest. Notice where the breath moves in your body. If you feel like you breathe all the way into a full deep breath, or if you feel like you breathe mostly up high in the chest. Notice what parts of your torso move as you breathe. So noticing if you are feeling your abdomen expand, if you are feeling your shoulders rise, and notice the pace of your breath. And now we're gonna shift to more of a diaphragmatic breathing pattern, a belly breath is what it would be called in yoga. And for this, we're just going to start to build into it. So as you breathe in, first try to allow the belly to expand. So take a breath in through your nose and feel the belly expand. This happens when the diaphragm descends down and creates an expansion in the abdomen. And then as you breathe out, just relax. The breath out should be mostly passive. So as you breathe in, feel the belly expand. As you breathe out, just relax and you can breathe in through your nose and out through your lips if that feels comfortable or in through your nose and out through your nose. Maybe helpful to place one hand on your stomach and one hand on your chest. And now as we breathe in, imagine your torso is a glass of water and you're just filling up that glass of water. So inhale and feel the belly expand. 
Feel the rib cage expand. And the breath comes all the way up to the collarbones, the apex of the lungs. And as you breathe out, you relax the upper chest, you relax the rib cage, you relax the belly. So again, as you breathe in, you feel the belly expand, the rib cage expand, the upper chest rises like water filling up a glass. And as you exhale, you relax the shoulders, the rib cage, and the belly. And just in quiet, do that a few more times for yourself. So finding a rhythm of breath for you that feels deeper than your natural breathing pattern, but also not labored. And I'll let, allow you a few seconds to do that. Maybe take about five full deep breaths. Keep breathing, and if your mind wanders, just try to keep your attention back to the breath. Don't get frustrated, it happens to the best of us. But a gentle nudging of your attention back to your breathing. Perhaps it can be helpful to count the seconds of your inhale and count the seconds of your exhale, and focus on trying to let both the breath in and the breath out be about equal in duration. Take a few more breaths. Good, and then if you have your eyes closed, just blink your eyes open. I'm gonna raise my computer up and set it further back so that you can see me. All right. So now, if you're comfortable with it, you can, and you want to join, you can stand up. And I'm going to turn to the side so you can see my movements a little bit better. Take a breath in, lift your arms out to the side and behind your head. Look up towards the ceiling, reaching back. And then exhale and fold forward, so round your spine as though you're reaching towards the floor. Release the weight of the head. And now inhale, reaching up and back again. Take the hands behind the head, spread the elbows wide. This helps stretch out the chest. And then exhale and fold forward. Okay. Rounding forward as so you're trying to touch your toes. Again, come up to standing with the arms this from up overhead. Look up and back and let your head come backwards. For those healthy necks, this should be a a movement that our bodies are designed to do, we just don't very often. And then exhale and fold forward. Release the weight of the head at the bottom and maybe nod your head yes. And shake your head no to make sure that you're relaxing your neck. And then come back up to stand. Now take the right hand to your hip and reach up and over. In this position, bring your awareness to the stretch along the side body. Take a few deep breaths and see if you can breathe into your rib cage, that your rib cage exceed. Back up right. Opposite hand to the hip, reach up and over. You can let that top arm come close towards the ear. Relax the weight of the head so that the neck relaxes and breathe into the side body. So you feel your rib cage expand with each breath. Coming back up to center. Now take the hands behind the back and think about squeezing the elbows together. So really squeeze the elbows together to open up the front of the chest and the shoulders. And again, arch the back. Go up towards the ceiling and if it's comfortable for you, release the weight of the head. Take a couple of deep breaths here. 
squeezing the glutes so that you're supporting your low back. And then to come out of this, just bring your chin towards your chest and come up to standing. And now for the next one, hands can come behind your back, interlace the fingers. Press the arms straight to open up through the front of the chest. If you're not able to take hold of your hands, if your shoulders are too tight, that's fine. You can use a towel, you can use your jacket, your sweater, and just kind of opening up. And you'll feel in this position that you're getting a stretch through the anterior deltoid muscles and the pectoral muscles. Those muscles get tight as you round your shoulders forward throughout the day. It's also a very common stress response to shrug the shoulders up as you get stressed. And so this can be helpful just to open you up. Now release. The next stretch for the chest is going to be taking one hand to a wall standing to the side of the wall. Thumb should be pointing up towards the ceiling. So my palm is on the wall, thumb is pointing up towards the ceiling, and I just step forward and slightly turn. So right hand to the wall to start and then turning gently to the left. So you should be feeling this in the front of your chest on the right side or in the right shoulder. Again, we wanna open up the chest for a number of reasons. As we stretch out and get the shoulders back where they belong, we can decrease a lot of the strain to the neck. So those muscles get really tired when they're stretched out. But also from a yoga perspective, this is important because stretching these muscles can help you to take a deeper, fuller breath. When we're constricted in these accessory respiratory muscles, it can be hard to feel a full um, diaphragmatic breathing pattern. Go ahead and switch sides. Left hand to the wall and gently step forward. If you feel like you've got the openness, you can kind of slowly turn slightly to the right. So going back to what I was saying, as we're stretching and we're opening up the chest, notice you can breathe a little bit more deeply. Again, through all of these stretches, what makes this different than just a standard stretching practice and more like yoga is the conscious awareness of your breathing and being really mindful about what the sensations are in your body. So noticing the stretch where you feel it, noticing the sensation. None of this should hurt or be painful. So if it doesn't feel right, it probably isn't. Just trying to find a mild, moderate stretch and then breathe into that space. Take about two more breaths and again, try to think about even breath, breathing in through the nose, equal duration, breathing out through nose. And then the last stretch we'll do standing is something you can do either on the wall or on a countertop or your desk at work. And that would be just putting your hands on the, the table and then shifting your hips backwards. This position again, feeling the heart or your chest melting towards the floor feeling a stretch there as you breathe into a little bit more openness in front of your shoulders and chest. Just dropping into that diaphragmatic breath can help shift you out of that sympathetic nervous system response, that stress response, into a little bit more of a restful and easeful nervous system response, parasympathetic. It's really powerful to shift into a smooth, deep breath that supports that calm, but also alert state. And then coming up to standing, just the opposite to stretch out the front of the hips, let your hips dip forward towards the counter, towards your desk. This one might be a little bit harder to do at your desk if it's low, but you can do it against the wall. Coming out of that. Next, Coming to a chair. So you're back at your desk, come to sitting in your chair. This chair is not the best for the next um, posture because of where the arms are, but I'm going to show you anyways. Turn to the side, let's turn to the right, and then the left knee can point down towards the floor. Let me adjust the screen so that you can see a bit better. Yeah? So as you're here, left knee points down towards the floor, we're turned to the side, and you should be able to feel a little bit of a stretch through the front of the left thigh. If you don't, think about shifting the hips farther forward. 
and maybe lifting the left arm up alongside the ear. And then just like every other pose that we're in, maybe take three to five full deep breaths. And counting the breath in and feeling the breath expand the belly and the ribs and the upper chest. And on each breath out, feeling all of that relax. Go ahead, one more breath here. And then release. Switching to the other side. So I'm turning to my left. I've got my right knee pointed down towards the floor. And I'm sort of sitting on the chair on my left side. I try to shift my hips forward so that I feel a stretch in the front of the left hip. So maybe you'll feel a stretch in your quadricep. Maybe you'll just feel it in your psoas hip flexor area. But either way, good to kind of stretch out in front of the hip. And then if you like, you can reach the right arm up alongside your ear. Again, keep your, your focus on your breath. If it helps, you can close your eyes. Might not be easy to focus on your breath, your mindfulness, your yoga practice, if you're looking at the work. Close eyes can help bring you inward a little bit more. And then coming out of that pose. Next into the spinal rotation. So as you sit here, take your hands either to the armrest of your chair or the back of your chair and gently rotate to the right. Again, we want to move gently so that we feel more of a release rather than muscle guarding. On a breath in, try to get a little taller, feel the spine elongated. As you exhale, just turn and we'll go over the right shoulder. Take three breaths here. So you inhale, you feel yourself get tall. You exhale, really gentle over pressure using the strength of your arms to turn. And one more time, big breath in. And exhale. Come back through center and we'll do the other side. So holding again onto either the armrest or the back of the chair, you might have the right hand against the left knee, gently rotating. Sitting up nice and tall, take a full breath in, feel like you got a centimeter taller, and as you breathe out, just try to relax. So going for about 50% effort, not trying to push too hard. See if you can let your breath be a little bit more deep. And counting three, two, one as you breathe in, and three, two, as you breathe out. Take one more breath here. Inhale. And exhale. And then come back through center. Last thing we'll do is a little hip stretch across the left ankle over the right knee. This is not comfortable for you. Don't worry about it. You can come and see us and we'll help you open up your hips. If this does feel good, you can just sit up nice and tall or gently lean forward. And you should feel a stretch in your left glute area. Trying to kind of keep the back straight and again, dropping into that full deep breath. Let's just take two breaths. And anytime if you notice yourself holding your breath, it can be useful to kind of sigh out through the lips. And so you're fogging up a glass mirror, come upright, and then switch sides. So right ankle crosses over the left knee, gently holding forward. Sitting upright might be enough sensation for you. And again, you're not trying to find the maximum stretch that you possibly can, but rather just to have some awareness of the sensation that's happening that being at the hip. Take one more breath here. And exhale. Back up through center. And just close your eyes for a moment. Notice how you're feeling here. Just notice if there's any shift or change in how you feel physically, perhaps a little bit warmer in your body, perhaps a little bit more awake and alert, and hopefully more calm. And then you can open your eyes. And that is all for practicing our mindfulness in our yoga session. But I do want, if people have questions, to leave a few minutes. So if anybody has questions, um, feel free to ask now. Please, thank you so much. While everybody is uh, kind of thinking of any questions that you may have, uh, and it may be easier to kind of pop them in the chat there in case people start talking all at once. 
Um, although I bet everybody is nice and relaxed and lulled into uh, a mini coma for the rest of their day. Um, so I hope everybody is nice and relaxed at this point. Um, so while, while people are thinking of any questions they may have, um, I just wanted to reiterate that I uh, dropped those uh, links into the chat for our YouTube channel and for our Facebook page. So I please do um, encourage you to visit those and uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel um, where you can see this and other uh, programs um, of Therapy Thursday. So, yeah. All right. Is there anybody that has any questions at this time? So I will say that practice took us about 10 minutes. So if you want to go to the YouTube video, you can go back and reference it. But also, if you found particular stretches to feel good, you can use the, um, the PowerPoint um, that's in the presentation as well to pick those out and look at later if you feel like you'll forget. So thank you. Um, yeah, thank you, everybody, so much for, for awesome. joining us today. Thank you. Thank you, Elise, uh, for, yeah. um, uh, for presenting today. It was fantastic. And uh, I encourage you all, if you need a refresher, to go ahead and check out our YouTube channel. This will be posted up there uh, today. And um, I guess that's about it. So thank you all so much. Have a great rest of your day, and we hope to see you next time. Okay, bye now. All right, bye.